Excuse me. You haven't seen a woman with a piece of cake, have you? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, a woman that's holding a piece of cake means she wants your body. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker from New Zealand. It's a love story. Just kind of wondering what's going to happen next. What I can think happen? she should get hit by a cat. That's what I was going to say. Oh. What you're hearing there is some scenes from Love Story. It opened up the International uh, New Zealand International Film Festival, and now it's on um, a general release just out today. Uh, the director, we've had him on the show here before. Um, it's always lovely to have him back and uh, talk about his films. Florian Hubbitch joining us. Good morning to you, Florian. I'll get hey, you to good morning. Hug, hug that over there. Good morning. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, of course, people also know you from Kaikoui Demolition, um, Woodenhead... Uh, the film on the beach, what was that called? Land Long White Cloud. Beautiful film. Yeah. That was the last one we we talked about, yeah, in fact. that's right. Yeah. And, and now you're back um, with this uh, new film. Where you Now, you originally went to New York, what, for inspiration? What happened there? How did you get there? I was lucky. I, I sort of won like a lottery for artists. It was a residency called the Harriet Free, Freelander Residency. And I got to spend a year in the city. Kind of like a scholarship. Or, yeah, yeah, to be inspired and to come back to New Zealand and then make some work. Yeah. Uh, and and um, I had like one of the best times in my life, felt really alive and free and yeah. was lucky enough to make a film while I was in that kind of space. How long were you going to be there for? I was supposed to be there for a year. Yeah. And two weeks before flying back, I had this freak out. I was like, I have to really make something and make you know, the <laughs> two most weeks out of this. <laughs> Last yeah. minute. So I, um, I rang up and changed my <laughs> flight. Yeah, right. I changed my ticket and then organised this shoot. Because was there a feeling that you did, um, you know, you were there for, it was an arts kind of thing, so you had to have something to bring home? Yeah, like I'd, I'd written, um, I developed a script, developed another Northland documentary, right. and neither <laughs> of them got funded. Okay. So, because I, I was really confident I was going to get some support and be able to make these when I'm back in New Zealand. Yeah. Didn't happen. So then, like, survival filmmaker instincts kicked in. I was like, okay, I have to make the most of this opportunity and make something while I'm here in yeah. New York. And what a brave piece it is. Um, part, I saw it. I, yeah, I have, I have, I have seen it, saw it at the film festival, and, and, and it's hard to know whether some of it's documentary, some of it's real. Beautiful. Yeah, explain, yeah, can you it. explain the, 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 the yeah, what, what, what exactly is it? I mean, what is Love Story? Well, um, it's, on my first week in New York, I saw a psychic, and everything she said was just totally bang on accurate. Really freaked me out. About your past? My past and my future, the advice she was giving me. Okay. Like it was, I was seri really serious about taking her advice. Is that a common thing to um, go and there see There are psychics, psychics everywhere. Right. It's like, yeah, they get good tax breaks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's one of my first impressions of New York was psychics everywhere. So I saw the psychic and um, she gave me a palm reading and everything was so bang on. I, I was like, okay, I have to ask her a really simple question mm. to verify your accuracy. And I said, um, what do you think I do? And she just looked at me and she said, well, you know, you're good in front of the camera, but you're much better behind the camera. Wow. Stay behind the camera. Don't ever go in front of it. Yeah. So these words stuck in my head for a year. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to jump in front of the camera. <laughs> and so for me, the, the natural way to do that was just to sort of film my life, take camera with me. Yeah. And also um, I got an amazing DOP, Marines Manchego, to, to film with me being in front of the camera. Yeah. But I didn't have a script. And, right. Um, yeah, I was going to shoot this film in two weeks. I'd organized an, this amazing editor to come from Sydney yeah. to New York, yeah. bring his laptop, stay with me to cut while we're shooting. I'd marinesse the DOP. One week later, I have this total freak out. I was like, oh my God, I can't think of a whole story now in one week. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not like a magician. So I went out on the street and just asked people off the street. I was just genuinely stuck. And the responses I got and the ideas. And were you filmed, like, filmed those responses? Yeah, 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 I filmed them. In the beginning, I actually just went to, the, to my local grocery store and I was chatting to Mr. Sheen and I told him my dilemma that yeah. I've organized this shoot and I just really don't know what kind of film I'm going to make. And he was just genuinely trying to help me. And what he, when he started talking, I just pulled my camera out of my bag because I had my camera with me every single day. Yeah. Started filming him, jumped on the <laughs> subway. Yep. And then I was just sort of got into this kind of role. I asked people on the subway. And when I got home and watched the footage, 
those responses, you can't write stuff no, like you can't. that. And actors can't act. It was it was amazing. They're, and then they're, I mean, they're uniquely New York responses. Yeah, totally. Aren't, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and then I met Marsha Yakovenko. It all just sort of flowed. This amazing. And now she's now 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 she's the lead actress in this. Yeah. Um, so you literally met her on the street. Yeah. Was she carrying a piece of cake? When I met her? <laughs> yeah. You have to, uh, I want people to, to watch the film and work it out. Yeah. Because yeah. this morning um, uh, I was very delighted uh, when this wee package yeah. arrived. Um, when, and, package? Had a, and had a wee, um, had a wee uh, note on the front. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, where does this come from? It says, what does it mean when a woman is holding a piece of cake? It means she wants your body. Which, of course, is the quote that we heard <laughs> Richie, from the, from from the, the film. And, um, and inside, a lovely piece of cake. And it's... Um, Red velvet? Red, yeah, and it and it looks to oh, be that's great. Yeah, so it's the same cake that's in the in the film, right? The same yep. same um, recipe, same yep. ingredients. I think Gordon and Jess sent that. Really, 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 nice really cool way of um, promote, promoting the film. Yeah. Actually, do, do you want to you want to share a piece of cake? You have it. No, no, no let's let's, oh, let's let's um let's share it round. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive piece of cake. Thanks. Do you have a knife or something? There? I'm a little no, bit of a just, germ of foe, but I don't just, want just, to. Just grab it. Just, just grab it? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, now, and, and that's kind of where the love story starts, right? It starts with a piece of cake. That's right, yep. Yeah, and then from there, you end up continuing what you started with talking to New Yorkers and saying, okay, I met this, met this girl, what should I do next? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I think you should did do a foot massage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you follow every single instruction? Oh, no, I, I, it was like a pick-a-path book for myself. Yeah. So I got to choose. There were options. Yeah, and sometimes as well I'd ask uh, Marsha as well which way, we, which path we should go down. Yeah. And a few times some of the ideas were so wild and out there that we actually did them, and then we found ourselves a little bit like with a story, where do we go from here, and yeah. almost stuck. And and um, it was quite interesting. We realized we're in this lucky position that we can go back, we can rewind. Right. But it made me realize that sometimes in life, you can't. If you do something, you know, that you regret, or yeah. you can't go back, you've got to work these consequences. Whereas we had this kind of, yeah, film. And, and, and I guess, and not to give anything away for, for the audience, but, yeah. but we are left as an audience wondering, now, is this a real life love story between, between Florian and Marsha? Yeah, or sort of very, that was the fun. Or are of, they putting this on? The fun of making it and the, the challenge. And in yeah. all my films, blurring fantasy with reality, yeah. it's what I love doing. Like Kaiko Demolition, even as totally a blurring of fantasy and reality, you right. know, and pe- people aren't always aware of it when they watch it, and um, and also I see filmmaking as this big illusion. Like film, when you make a film, it's totally contrived. Mm. You know, you, you're only you're not seeing the twenty people standing around, you know, the yes. cast and crew. Yeah. So finding real bits of realness and truth. Or whatever, and that is like is the challenge and the thing that I love to explore and you're, do all my work. You're also often, of course, seeing what the boss at the big film production company wants. The boss sitting behind the desk, what he has instructed is going to happen. Guess where... who was the boss on this film? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And isn't that so thing... every morning I'd get up, I'd do hiring and firing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hire yeah. a few more people, fire a few more, and <laughs> yeah. But isn't that thing with your with with your films that you start with one thing? Um, but you you let it organically do its thing, and so you don't actually know what's going to happen. Totally. And I, I think, I find when you're being spontaneous, mm. or you're forced to be spontaneous, like meeting random people and filming it, it, um, it means you have to use your intuition, because there's no time to kind of doubt decisions or to question them or yeah. intellectualize them. And that's the kind of spirit I love making films in, like Kaiko Demolition was like that too. Just going with the flow, and it's like, you know, sometimes you go on holiday, and you're kind of open to things because you're in a new place. And then things just happen. You have crazy coincidences. You, you, like, and that's how I like to make films, yeah. try to. And I, it's, I don't always do it, but this film I kind of was on that kind of vibe. Is there ever a risk, though, that that spontaneity won't happen and, and that you hit a brick wall, you hit a dead end? Yeah, well, like, I had days when I was, like, you know, when I didn't wake up feeling happy in the morning or good. And I could walk around the whole day by myself with the camera and not find one person I want to talk to mm. or to, to approach. So, um, whereas other days, feeling alive and free and, you know, get three hours of footage of gold in one day. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess people yeah. could get the impression that you'd be the sort of person who is always talk, walking up to people and talking to them and, and being really brave like that. But yeah, no, I definitely have ups and downs. Yeah. And, and my time in York was, you know, like I had 
the best times of my life and in winter I actually had a really hard time as well huh. you know and found it hard being there and missed New Zealand back home and yeah so totally it's all yeah. it's all in there um how did it feel having the film launch the New Zealand International Film Festival you were there <laughs> yeah it was it was, it was a full huh? house at the Civic yeah, right full yeah. house um and amazing just I'd imagine totally yeah such a the audience was just amazing and the screen was so big in the Civic. I saw yeah. things I've never seen before, right. <laughs> like the, yeah, yeah. the squirrel watching me um, yeah. in one of the scenes, and just how people broke into applause throughout the film. Yeah, that was just really kind of yeah. yeah that was that spontaneous, was... but throughout the film, we yeah. had the audience responded. Yeah. yeah, yeah, depending on who um, who you were talking to as well. Yeah, um, that's quite amazing. That you you and couldn't have the, seen that totally. And when some of the people off the street address the audience, yeah. Like, oh my God, that was just so amazing sitting in that audience and like just the connection. Yeah. Like, and yeah, and you just felt you can't not feel the love from those people in the film because they're so beautiful and yeah. generous yeah. and like, yeah, giving and just no, not pretentious, no bullshit, just from the heart and yeah. And then the applause at the end has got to be nice. <laughs> um, the Love St love Story is the name of the film, and it is on uh, general release now. It's um, and playing in Auckland at Queen Street, um, Albany, Sylvia Park, Rialto, Bridgeway. Of course, it'll be making its way around yeah. the country as well. The film festival is still going. rest of the country well. is in two weeks. In two weeks. Brilliant. Well, that is um, fantastic. I recommend everyone go and check it out. It is, as I say, called Love Story. Florian Hubbard has been my guest in the Kiwi studio. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much, Wim.